Hello everyone, I'm Jeb and welcome back to another Formula 1 video. Today we will be discussing Pascal Wehrlein, a Formula 1 driver who I felt was seriously underrated. To start this video off, we have to go back. Where? Back to the future! No, no, just back to Formula 1 in 2014. Now, at the time, Marussia were the perennial underdog of Formula 1, often selecting drivers who paid enough for them to see out a season rather than for actual driving skill. However, even this tactic wasn't working, and the turbo hybrid era's increased budget requirements certainly weren't helping. Despite Jules Bianchi's two points in the 2014 Monaco Grand Prix, the Marussia team entered administration in January 2015, just before the start of that year's Formula 1 season. However, investors rescued the team and rebranded it as Mano Marussia F1 team for 2015. Mano Marussia failed to score points though, and was rebranded solely as Mano Racing Team for 2016. And that's where Pascal Wehrlein comes in. Wehrlein started out in karting as many Formula 1 drivers do, and progressed to the ADAC Formula Masters Series in 2010, which was at the time seen as the major feeder series to German Formula 3. He won one race at the Saxon Ring and scored three podiums, finishing fifth in the championship. The following year, he took seven wins and dominated the championship title, securing a drive in the Formula 3 Euro Series. As a complete rookie in Formula 3, he surprised many by winning a race at the Nürburgring and scoring an astonishing 10 podiums to finish runner-up in the championship to Formula 3 veteran Daniel Giuncadella. Instead of continuing in European Open Wheel Series, which is the traditional route to Formula 1, Wehrlein moved to DTM with Mucka Motorsport at the tender age of 18. He scored 3 points and only placed 22nd in the championship. 2014 saw a switch to the HWA team, which was backed by Mercedes-Benz. Wehrlein later became the youngest race winner in DTM history, and finished 8th in the championship that year. He was also signed as a junior reserve driver for the Mercedes-AMG Formula 1 team, and drove for both Force India and Mercedes in pre-season testing. In 2015, Fairline returned to DTM with HWA, and in a competitive and inconsistent season for many drivers, he became the youngest champion in DTM history at the age of 20. Despite runner-up Jamie Green winning four times to Fairline's two wins, he remained more consistent than the experienced Green, and won the title by 19 points. As the Mercedes reserve driver, Fairline entered Formula 1 with the newly established Manor Racing Team for the 2016 season. Manor received access to the Mercedes wind tunnel facilities in exchange for hiring him. At the season opening Australian Grand Prix, Fairline qualified 22nd and last, although his teammate Rio Harrianto's three place grid penalty meant that he actually started the race 21st. Fairline was the last qualified finisher in the race, crossing the line in 16th. He improved in Bahrain, but he qualified 17th, just one place outside Q2. He followed it up with a great drive to finish the race P13, ahead of both the Force India cars and the fastest Sauber of Felipe Nazar. Harrianto finished 17th, his first finish of the 2016 season, although he was the last car to actually finish the race. Wehrlein's skill was clearly evident, however, the Manor car was outplaced by nearly every car on the grid in 2016, with the exception of the better funded Sauber team. The cars were often 3.5 to 5 seconds off pole in qualifying trim, and even Sauber was still several tenths faster. Wehrlein outperformed the car as much as he could, often taking the fight to the faster Renaults and Saubers. However, the poorly performing Manor car was falling behind even further, with rumours that Manor would go bankrupt at the end of the season if they did not finish in the top 10 in the Constructors' Championship. However, the Austrian Grand Prix changed everything. At the shortest circuit on the calendar, where the Manor's many disadvantages would be minimised, Wehrlein qualified 12th, the team's best ever qualifying performance, and finished the race in 10th, thanks to a retirement from Sergio Perez with two laps to go. This was the first ever points finish for both Wehrlein and Manor, and the sole point scored from this finish was enough to put Manor ahead of Sauber in the Constructors' Championship, and ensure the team's financial survival with the prize money. After the German Grand Prix, Rio Harrianto was demoted to reserve driver due to his sponsor's failure to coffin up money to keep the seat. He was replaced by Mercedes junior driver and Renault F1 reserve Esteban Ocon, who had appeared in testing for Renault multiple times. Harrianto was beaten in qualifying 8 times to 4 by Wehrlein, and excluding race retirements, beaten in results 8 to 0. Ocon and Wehrlein continued onward, as Sauber continued a pointless tally in the season. It seemed as though the funding for Manor's 10th place in the championship was all but assured. However, at the penultimate round in Interlagos, there was a major upset, 
In the wet conditions, Felipe Neza finished ninth, scoring two points for Sauber and demoting Manor to last place in the standings. This loss cost Manor an estimated £30 million, and despite registering with the FIA for the 2017 season, Manor were not able to raise the funding to compete, and went into financial administration in January 2017. Veerlein was left without a drive in F1 for 2017 following the collapse of Manor. However, he was eventually signed at Sauber to replace Felipe Neza. This meant that by scoring those two points in Brazil and of bankrupting Manor, Neza had essentially killed his own Formula 1 career now that there was no Manor seats to race for. An injury in the pre-season race of champions saw Veerlein replaced by Antonio Giovinazzi for the first two races of the 2017 season, although he did take part in the first two free practices of the Australian Grand Prix. He returned to Formula 1 at the Bahrain Grand Prix, and immediately impressed by qualifying 13th and finishing 11th, just behind the Force India of former teammate Esteban Ocon. However, the Sauber, while certainly better in comparison to the rest of the grid than the 2016 Manor, was still the slowest car in the championship, and Veerlein once again found himself struggling to score good finishes in an underperforming car. In the Spanish Grand Prix, he qualified 15th, and pulled off an incredible drive on a one-stop strategy to cross the line 7th, losing not a single one of the positions he gained. Unfortunately, a 5-second penalty for a pit lane violation demoted him to 8th, behind the Toro Rosso of Carlos Sainz Jr. He was involved in a major collision in the Monaco Grand Prix, when the returning Jensen Button crashed his McLaren into the Sauber at Portier Corner, flipping the Sauber against the wall on its side and out of the race. Button later ended his 306th and final Formula 1 Grand Prix in the pit lane with suspension damage caused by the crash. Veerlein's next points finish came at the dramatic Azerbaijan Grand Prix. After battling all race long for 10th place with his teammate Marcus Ericsson, even being involved in a collision with his fellow Sauber, Veerlein emerged victorious and cruised across the line in 10th place, increasing his 2017 points tally to 5 points. Despite out-qualifying and out-racing Ericsson for most of the season, and scoring all of Sauber's points, Ericsson's sponsorship was deemed to be more lucrative than Veerlein's, and so Veerlein was dropped by Sauber for 2018. His replacement was the inaugural Formula 2 champion, and later Ferrari race winner and current driver, Charles Leclerc. Veerlein returned to DTM with HWA in 2018, and only scored one podium, finishing 8th in the championship standings. He moved to Mahindra Racing in Formula E for 2019 and scored a pole position and second place finish in only his third race in the series. However, he announced his departure from Mahindra on Instagram in June 2020, signing up to Porsche's Formula E team for 2021 and replacing Swiss driver Neil Jani. At first glance, one could dismiss Verline's career as yet another failed F1 driver in Formula 1's backmarker teams. His reported poor attitude towards team orders is cited as another factor in the end of his Formula 1 career. On pure talent though, Fairline destroyed Harry Anto at Manor, and beat the more experienced Marcus Ericsson at Sauber. His pace and ability to outperform backmarker cars was excellent. However, Mercedes chose to focus on Esteban Ocon in Formula 1 instead, leaving Fairline out in the cold. He turned 26 years old last week. He's still young enough to pull a Brendan Hartley-esque return to Formula 1, although it is extremely unlikely. His appointment for the position of Ferrari's development driver in 2019 shows that he is still possibly F1 worthy. However, the influx of younger and arguably more skilled talent means that unfortunately, Veerlein will be another underrated driver who never quite got to show his promise in Formula 1.